Indianapolis in the fall. The motorsports capital of the world turns to more hybrid happenings and welcomes the biggest of all events for off-road enthusiasts. Like the four-wheel faithful, mud racers from all over the country head to the state fairgrounds. Some of the biggest names in the sport have been here over the years, like Mike Thomas, Tom Means, and Mr. Four-Wheeler Jim McConville. These men have left their marks by shedding new low ETs at the Fall Nationals. Today, we'll see if a new name will be added to this Jamboree's list of lore. But this we know, Indiana Grit does not surrender glory without a fight. This is Trucks and Tractor Power. Today, we feature the best in MMRO mud racing. From the Indiana State Fairgrounds in Indianapolis, it's the four-wheel and off-road Jamboree Fall Nationals. Today, the MMRO Class 5 Cut Tire Competition. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Lee, and welcome to Trucks and Tractor Power. You know, in all kinds of motorsports, the fall of the year means really the start of the second half of the season. The fall also means cooler temperatures. That's typical here in Indiana. But also, every year we come to my hometown, and it rains. In fact, it's rained this weekend. Now, right now, the skies are partly cloudy. It is cool, and conditions are great for both the fans and the competitors. In fact, the engines like the coolness with the high humidity. Helps to build more horsepower. But right now, let's check in on track conditions with my colleague, Army Armstrong. Gary, yeah, you know, earlier today we had some other classes running a pit and they didn't have any problem at all with it. As a matter of fact, they said the pit itself is in awfully good shape. The water all around is kind of like a swamp land. That didn't seem to bother anybody. As a matter of fact, if we told you before, the moisture actually helped these guys make horsepower. But there is a little bit of a problem. I'm going to show it to you. On the starting line itself where I'm standing, you've got two choices. You can either line up in a real sandy stuff like this or you got to go to the mud. Now, the guys are telling me if you don't line up in the mud, you might as well go home because that's the stuff that gets you on the other end of this track quick. Back to you, Gary. Well, it's time to go racing, but earlier, Army took a look at what one of these mud racers looks like when you're starting from scratch. Believe it or not, what you're looking at are basically the same vehicles. However, the one in the foreground that I'm setting in is a bare frame that they're going to be hanging all the speed components off of. When this vehicle comes out next year, we see it on television, it'll have a supercharged engine, have a front end and everything hung onto the bare frame. This is what holds it all together. We just want to kind of show you what the finished product looks like. Stressed out next to us, it's all dressed up and ready to go. The problem we've got with this new one is what kind of dress are we going to get her for the prom? Because you got to remember, you're spinning the wheels in two seconds at 160 mile an hour with over 1,500 horsepower. Back to you, Gary. Well, up first will be Scott Cecil. There is Scott in the near lane. The far lane will be Dan Brown in Mind Games 2. Now, Brown may be spinning those wheels at 160 miles per hour, but I doubt if Cecil is. Oh, Brown runs that supercharged in. He likes to really get up and wing it. You can hear it actually whistling as it goes down the track. Runs the big, tall tires out of Class 5. Now, it's hard to believe that these tires originally started their life as a highway-type tire, but each of the racers modify them. That's one of the class requirements. They must be DOT-approved tires to start off with. It's going to be all Dan Brown. Cecil has a problem. Brown, the first to log in a time today at 2.677. It's going to be a quick track. Obviously, it's the faster going first out. Man, I tell you, check this out. 2.677 with a bounce. All right, there's the replay. Let's go down and talk to him. Dan, a 2.67 first out of the box. Is that track going to get better, or did you get the first shot at it? Armin, the track's pretty tight and t tacky out there. I don't know if, as long as it don't run up, the line's a little sticky. There's pretty good, uh, pretty good line left there. It might get a little better as the night goes along. Well, let's see if he's a prognosticator as we uh, line up two more combatants here. Coming up next, there is the Mud Patrol. Tom Means won this event back in 1991, and uh, he will be taking on Jack Frost. Jack Frost drives insane to the membrane. That's I, cool. lo I love these names. Hey, if you had a name like Jack Frost, you'd have a car <laughs> name insane to the membrane. 
but you'd be having fun just like Jack is. They are indeed. But you'd also be drawing one of the baddest boys in the sport too, you know. Oh, look at that run that Meads set down. Let's check the time. 2.690. 2690. That is only second fast right now. 3.006 ET for Jack Frost. Now keep in mind a three-second run is good in the sport. Now, did you notice I refrained from saying Jack Frost was nipping at his nose? Thank you. <laughs> well, Tom Means standing by at the end of the pit with Army. Tom, it looked like you actually banged the side of the track right at the finish line. Did that affect you at all? Yeah, it slowed me down a little bit. It, it picked the front wheels out, and, you know, I really couldn't turn it or nothing. But I got down near the end. I, I knew I was going to hit the wall, but I couldn't lift, you know. This is Indianapolis. You don't lift here, do you? No, that's for sure. We're coming back to the Indiana State Fairgrounds, a fine-looking show-and-shine Jeep. Stay with us. They have come from near and far to the Indiana State Fairgrounds for the fall Jamboree Nationals. Hi, everybody. Gary Lee along with Army Armstrong. There is the bandit as next up Tony Farrell and the Blue Ribbon Bandit takes on Mike Camella's Bonkers. Well, you know, you come to Indianapolis, there's, a, there's something about this place. And what it does, it brings out the best in everybody. People go faster here than I think any place in any form of motorsports. It's, it's, it's almost a mystique. When you come into the belt line, you're going to go fast. There's something magic about the Indianapolis. And I love it. The Bandit lays down a good one. Let's check the time. Farrell's time a 2.795. That would be, I think, third fast so far. Now, Farrell bounced on the end. Camilla bounced on the starting line and goes to 283. I'll tell you what, it is impressive how fast these guys are. Good track. Actually, a good day for both the drivers and the fans, as we've uh, talked about before. So Tony Farrell takes that run, and let's talk to Tony. 279 puts you third, and with this group, that's not bad. But the big question is, can you stay there? Will a 279 keep you in that three spot? Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of big hitters out there. Um, I believe the track might get a little better, although their right lane's getting, cars are getting in the air a little bit. So it, it may stay, but I don't think so. Well, the track indeed is getting rough. Talk about some heavy hitters. Shane Back coming up next in Attitude Adjuster, and he will roll in next to Chuck Knowles' stepchild. Shane Back, uh, out of the Bluegrass State, runs a car in remembrance of his father. His father got him involved in the sport years ago, passed away, so he wants to remember his dad. Meanwhile, here comes a guy with no doors, the man with no doors, Gary. Blew the doors off. Took Trump. the doors off, I guess, for weight purposes. That's the stepchild, Chuck Knoll. And look how cramped up he is in that next time we get a shot of that cockpit. Look how cramped up he is in there. Well, he's only going to be in there for three seconds. <laughs> Not Comfort. like he's going to Oklahoma and back or anything. Whoa. Well, a problem in that far lane. Noel takes it out the end at 2.912. A good pass for Chuck, but a problem. Shane back, the attitude adjuster of 5.725. Had he been going to Oklahoma, it would have been a quick trip, though. You know what? I guess so. Bad to the bone. I love some of the names on these vehicles. Bad to the bone. I love the way this one sounds. It's got that California crisp sound to it. And I mean, there is a difference in the engine. But here what do we have here? Eddie Williams. Nasty boys. All the kids like Eddie's have got a little character up on the front. Meanwhile, the Fresno Flyer moves in the other lane. And these vehicles, they have a sound all their own. Let's see if we can hear the difference in them. They do make some horsepower for you. Play out to enjoy the sound. Oh. Hang on. Oh, he almost got that thing on its side. What a wild ride for bad to the bone. Gary Mink a 2.710, but I tell you, he put his stomach in his throat with that ride. And Eddie Williams. The Nasty Boys at 3.501, but take a look at Bad to the Bone. He's in trouble halfway through this run. At this point in time, the only thing you can do is hope that the uh, Lady of Blasted Acceleration is looking over your shoulder, Gary. And look at this. He almost, if he tucked that right side tire, he'd have gone on over, but uh, he comes out of there unscathed, and he's down with Army. Uh, the number.
number 271. It's a long trip from California, and I'm not about to get over close to that muddy truck. But the 271 number puts you in third place. But man, you were driving that puppy out the other end. Yeah, it was moving. Uh, some real slick stuff. Uh, it's a lot of fun, though. You know, it's amazing. It's almost like people expect you to drive like that because you're one of the California guys, and you didn't let them down one bit. Let's see if that number holds up for you. Well, we hope it will. Right now, as we take a look at the leaderboard, Dan Brown leads Tom Mink. Gary Mink there is in third. Tony Farrell and Mike Camello rounding out the top five. As uh, I wouldn't want to be a riding mechanic here at the Indiana State Fairgrounds as we take a look at uh, Eddie Williams' friends on the Nasty Boys. Well, we are back. We certainly see enough of the monster truck uh, Bigfoot on this program, but this is a nice piece out of New York called Longfoot making its way down the midway here at the State Fairgrounds. Gordon Chessie now to the line in uh, just a moment. He'll be competing. And earlier, Army took a look at one of the things that these vehicles do before they go racing. Gary, before they go racing, they got to take just a second to do something else. So something else they got to do is go through a safety inspection. Like any form of motorsport, safety is a major concern. We're going to show you some of the things they look for. Since it's a chain drive, they got to have a shield around the chain. This particular shield here is a TCI transmission shield in case the transmission blows up. To restrain the blower, you got these blower straps. You also have special chains to pull the throttle linkage back in case you get an over rev situation. And then we're going to work away to the front. Of course, you got your, your seat belt and shoulder harnesses, and they make sure that the helmet meets certain specifications. So it's not just a case of building something and going racing. You got to meet the rules, too. Back to you, Gary. And of course, we see the driver uh, in Scott's in that protective roll cage in all these vehicles as Durbin takes on Jesse. This is Charles Durbin in the axle breaker in the far lane. That vehicle may be named the axle breaker, but the axle braking actually took place in the other lane, Gary. Yeah, it'll take just a second to remove Gordon Chessy. And uh, while we have a moment, we can tell you the four-wheel jamborees are part of the special events performance series featuring a weekend of four-wheel fun. Visit the manufacturer's midway and check out the show and shine competition. Contact the special events promotion company to find out when a jamboree will be coming to your area. Coming up next is Mike Behrman. This man has been dominant on the NMRO circuit over the past couple of seasons. He's the 93 and 94 cut tire champion. Well, you see the beautiful baby blue 27 rows to roll out. You know one thing for sure, the Behrman boys are back in town. We just saw his brother Steve win the uh, paddle tire division here on Trucks and Tractor Power. And uh, there's a look at Gary Reddick, a touch of madness. Chemical reaction and a touch of madness. Awesome name. I like it. But look at the time to beat. Ooh. Oh, he almost high sided that, but that was the sound of horsepower. Man. But Mike Behrman at 2640. I wonder if they keep their eyes open for the whole run. All right, that's the quick for the day at 2640 as we take a look at the. Uh, time for Gary Reddick, but man, look at this replay coming right at you. Watch him high side this thing. He gets it on a wall and hangs a throttle in it. Look at here. There's the benchmark, 2640, and uh, Mike is with Army. Well, we got good news and bad news. The bad news, everybody's complained about the track. The good news didn't make a bit of difference to you. You're the new leader with a 264. How'd you do it? I don't know. Car went nice and straight, and the Audi's horsepower pulled us through. You look like you got up on the curb. That had to help you a little bit, or on the berm. No, I didn't really even feel it. Felt like I was going nice and straight. <laughs> well, wait, wait till he sees the video replay. Up to the line now, Jerry Schofeld, over in the far lane, and a guy who's taking us on some wild rides. Garland Walls in the Gambler. You know, Garland hooked up with the X1R people to do research and development for a new lubricant, and he is really making a lot of horsepower. But like you say. He really can make some wild runs for you. 32 Ford Coupe. He got on that side too, Gary. A little passive run for him. Good one, though, at 2.879, but not nearly fast enough to move the uh, top five on the leaderboard. I wonder why they're getting on that wall. Yeah, speaking of the leaderboard, Mike Behrman once again at 2.640, leading Dan Brown, Tom Meeks, Gary Mink, and Tony Farrell. Right now, let's go back trackside and talk to Garland Walls. Garland, a 2.879. Not a bad number considering where you are in this field. 
Nah, not too bad, I guess. There's a bunch of cars here and a bunch of good cars. Let me ask you a question. You're a long way from home. If you could go back up there right now, would you do anything different that you did on that run? Uh, yeah, I'd probably loosen the clutch up a little bit more when one bites so hard off the line. Speaking of wild rides, we're going to have a guy that takes us on wild rides every now and then, Tom Marsh in the Intruder, a purple and green roadster. And he'll be taking on Danny Driscoll in Hot Flash. There's a look at Tom Marsh. And we pan over to Hot Flash and Danny Driscoll. Advantage has got to be to Marsh here just by the fact of the weight that he is not carrying. Driscoll, you know, he comes from the Jamboree circuit, runs real good in his class. He's a class racer. But today, he's definitely step up and run with the big boys. Runs a full-size Chevrolet uh, body. But right now, when that light goes green, watch what happens. We got problems. Jerry, he's in trouble. He's going over. The throttle hung up. He's upside down. Rolls the intruder all the way over. We're looking for our Tom Marsh. There is movement in the cockpit. He appears to be okay, but it appeared the throttle did hang on him. The roll cage did not collapse around him. Boy, that says a lot for whoever built that car. Well, you can see why they have roll cages. He is climbing out right now. Waves that he's okay, clearing up the cockpit. It appeared right here the throttle hung up. Yeah, he goes over the infield track, kind of high sides. He knows he's in trouble, looking for a place to land. Burps the throttle. Now gravity takes over and inertia. Once again, as he rolls it all the way over, the cage holds. He is okay, and he is down there now in the pit area with Army Armstrong. Tom, go ahead and take your helmet off. But I'll tell you right now, you did the only thing you can do. We were standing out at the top end when you came through. Did the, the throttle stick on you? Is that what it was? Yeah, I come out and the throttle stuck a little bit, but it wasn't near as bad as, a, as it should have been. I got back in it to try to bring it around, and from that time on, I was just fighting it. And I was just trying to get in an open area and trying to get it under control, and I just run out of room. And it's. It looked to me like you were trying to actually come up on the throttle and spin the car around to make it stop. And then we had one tire that just grew tremendously, and that's what turned you over. Yeah, I think that, that tire popped off is what finally made it catch. It, it was, I just ran out of room. It just happened too quick, you know. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Well, get over here and talk to the fire department guys and the EMTs. They want to talk to you. Yeah, thanks, Army. It's amazing how clear the mind can be when you're going out of control. Let me ask you a question. The throttle stuck a little bit. Is that like being a little pregnant? <laughs> I don't know. You'll have to ask Tom. Back at the Indiana State Fairgrounds, this is the aftermath of the altercation bombing. Tom Mark, once again, Tom is okay. On now to some highlights from Class 5 competition. Matt Hospital and No Surrender, the brother of the 94 NMR paddle tire champion Paul that's a 2.93 against Gene Peak and Dirty Deeds. These guys are really cranking up on the supercharger. You can hear them whining on the other end of the track. Former cut tire champion Ron Pence does not gain admission to the two second club in Tater. But also an earlier action, the underslung chassis of the Bluegrass State of Jeff Ballard not able to get the number he was looking for. Couldn't get on top of the mud. He got there first, but didn't get there quick enough. Another fellow didn't get the number he was looking for. Relied on the Ford horsepower out of Daytona Beach, Florida. Gary Olstein, the little sprint car action on the other end. Watch the front end of the chassis. He powers it out of the other end. But the number just wasn't there, Gary. Well, Army, we are getting ready now for our final pair. It will be Mark Green, the Mud Buster, against Hyperactive. There is Mike Yosha in Hyperactive. It's hard to believe they're not in the pit right now. This is just a staging area. It tells you how much water there is around this place today. The hyperactive car from right here in the Indianapolis area, so Yosha did not have to travel far from home to take on the mud buster of Mark Green, our final pair in the competition, shooting after Mike uh, Behrman 2.640. That is the time to beat. That's the benchmark. Both drivers working that starting line, trying to push about it. If you can just get a six-inch push on it, it'll help you. That's why while the drivers run up the starting line and then roll forward and roll back, Try to gain that six-inch advantage. We got a good side-by-side -side race. I don't think the numbers are going to be there, but that was a good race, Gary. 2.944 for Mark Green. You're right. It was a good side-by-side -side competition. Numbers not there to move him up in the point standings at 3.054. And that means that Mike Behrman hangs on to win it over Dan Brown, Tom Meeks, Gary Mink, and Tony Farrell. Here's your champion. Well, Gary, this is the guy that makes the horsepower. This is the guy that drives the horsepower to win this thing today. And really, it looked to me like you had a little bit more foresight to these other guys. You were the first one to get up on the left side of the track. 
after you did it, a lot of other people did it, but couldn't match your number. Congratulations to you. Thanks. I didn't really try to get up on this side. It's just where the car went. Well, it seemed a really mile an hour, and after you did it, everybody in the world started uh, following you on it. So, uh, hey, big win. You've had some bad luck here before, but uh, you turned it around. Congratulations for taking the Jamboree. All right. Thanks a lot. Our congratulations to Mike Behrman for Army Armstrong. I'm Gary Lee. We'll see you next week on Trucks and Tractor Power. Now here's news of an exciting video release from Diamond B Sports.